And the issue is that she's more effective when it's one option after the other, after the other, in a set sequence. Duck Hunt has the privilege of being able to establish that sequence and alter the timing ever so slightly by virtue of the flexibility of Can as a projectile, the general unpredictability of the gunman, especially if the opponent is not aware of the uh, rotation of the gunman. Look and at these follow-ups from Zane. That trap was so good, too. Zane was able to cover, uh, you know, air dodging out with the can and then position themselves to be able to cover the neutral air dodge back towards them. In that position, you just kind of have to hold that or throw out some Hail Mary movement option, but stretch. How's that? How's that for a Hail Mary? <laughs> yeah, down air, up smash. I didn't know that was a thing. Did you know that was a thing? I mean, hey, listen, it's not real. It's a crack reaction. But that's what I'm telling you is that Stretch is playing like that today. And I think it's incredibly lethal. Behind the hands of Lucina, like, she has those options. And zoners like Duck Hunt don't typically mm -hmm. have the tools to break out of them that quickly. If Zane commits can to controlling space, they can't commit to utilizing it as a, a defensive tool. Zane is trying to really box with Lucina in a lot of spaces where she definitely outranges with her own F tilt. We're not going to be contesting for that kind of F tilt. That was such an amazing option from Zane. Such good timing and awareness of that situation. And now Stretch has to find a way to be able to get back onto the stage. Zane setting up a juggle, catching the air dodge out with a can. Oh my. Oh, I like that. Making sure to hold onto the can for that ledge play. Zane is just continuing this pressure, but Scratch making themselves so ambiguous as they land, able to quickly reverse that situation and put Zane at the ledge, but... Shield breaker don't mean nothing if we just parry out here. Yep. Like we've already seen both... Oh! oh! Heavy call out from Zane. Uppy out of the pressure from Stretch ending up meeting Can. And Stretch put himself <gasps> there. Look at Zane again. The way that Zane's waiting is so patient, so smart. Like, always being able to cover the next air dodge. As Stretch, you just need to get out of there. I don't know what that's necessarily going to entail, uh, but run. Oh, my. Oh. Uh, big damage. Gunman the wrong way. Doesn't matter, though. As Stretch opts to stay to the plats. That actually makes, like, for really good space sense for this mm -hmm. stage. Like, just staying off of whatever floor, so to speak, that the platforms mm -hmm. uh, or base platform wherever Zane is positioned, because wow. that area secured. That's all Duck Hunt space. Mm -hmm. I feel like Stretch in this set so far has not tried to swat away the can nearly as much. We don't see like a lot of forwarders to be able to slap it back. Stretch going out through so deep, pixels away from Zane's own can, meeting them and potentially stuffing out that jump. That was, Stretch was playing with fire, didn't work out, but at least they didn't die. And now it's just a matter of trying to break the zone, but rushing in is just eating more and more damage. If you guess wrong against one of the tools, you're almost certain to run into the other two. To say nothing of the fact that Zane is keeping a very exact mid to close range space where Lucina doesn't really have the comfort zone for being able to burst in really quickly, mm -hmm. but she could do that. Being able to react ahead of time and outrange yep. the normals that Duckman has at his disposal. Oh, Zane tries to go through the follow up a little bit too low off stage from the ground, and now Zane setting up another ledge trap. That time, Stretch successfully swatting away uh, the can. I love how Stretch tries to like really get in your airspace and jump in on you with empty hops, but if an opponent's pressing a button, that can easily call that out every step of the way. Oh man, Zane, Stretch has just been getting stuck in the corner. That's kind of what Duck Hunt wants to do. That's what Duck Hunt thrives off of. Especially a character that has the tools to brawl in close in. Oh my. Ooh, oh, buddy. No, watch out for that one. That almost went really, really south. Uh, alas, Zayn is going to be able to find the edge guard with Can. Yeah, as Lucina, you don't got many options there. You can't really drift in further in because you still have to make it onto the stage before you sink down too low. You got to press up B right then and there. And listen, if you're a little bit too slow with it, Can's just going to be up in your face. So I want to see, actually, does Stretch have a double jump in this situation? Yeah, no, 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 they got... There's the jump, there's the air dodge and they before they touch landed. the ground. Yep, that's that's really where this interaction came into play. Also, they oh, needed no. To, oh no, they did get the double jump back. But I guess they must have touched for like barely a frame at that, but they just chose a bad option to jump yeah. into. It do be like that. Mm -hmm. Like, especially that deep out, like... Zane would have been able to react to pretty much anything. And Zane could have had even an even more lethal offstage mm -hmm. play there, but they just missed uh, down air and can to put it into a position where it would be able to ping itself into the path that Dothan yeah. Slash offers. 
that or double jump might have just been a mistake. Honestly, Stretch, Stretch could have probably just like picked a better option, but if they sunk any lower, would they have been able to make it back? No, they have not. But Stretch this time going out completely fearlessly against Zane, swatting out Can every step of the way. Um, and that's exactly what you have to do because Duck Hunt loves using Can as coverage to be able to make their approach back onto the stage very nice and safe. If you can get out there and throw out a nice, active, and big hitbox like Lucina Florida, you can invalidate that option and maybe hit the, uh, Duck Hunt off stage. Cool. Immediately seeing that this is a much more aggressive stretch coming into game two. We're back to Battlefield, I think it was a great decision because it gives you that space to be able to contest Duck Hunt. You just need to make the most of that space. Mm -hmm. For as oh, Vanilla, no. that's unfortunate. That's just what rough. happened? He just dipped too low, Dolphin Slash too low from the ledge, and it gave us a dead even game. That's such a shame for Stretch as well because he dealt him such a nice lead. Yeah. If he's willing to play aggressive as he began this game, though, I think he'll be just fine. A lot of players, I just feel like as soon as they drop a lead like that, that's when they start playing really defensively and way too safely. If you get too comfortable sitting in a corner against a character like Duck Hunt, that's when they have all the time that they need to be able to set up. But Stretch, this is exactly what I mean. They are swatting away these cans. They're using the F-tilt, forwarders, and neutralers, and really just invalidating that tool instead of respecting it the wrong way. Yeah, no, that's... Like, there's... We saw a couple of really important aspects of Lucina in this matchup, and that's one. Up tilt just completely gets rid of the can. It sends the can into an obscure angle that's not very useful for Duck Hunt. And then also up tilt gets rid of the wild gunman. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Being able to take away those two tools with relative oh ease for Lucina. Look at Zane's tracking. Look at the way that Zane is just following Stretch from stage to stage. Mm. Tries to neutralize Stretch with a bit of a panic option, but still able to land safely. Stretch tries to get that tech chase, but not in a position to be able to do so in the moment. They needed to fall hop a little bit sooner. Look how much that Stretch is trying to ping the can into uh, Zane themselves. Like, they're still approaching with can, and they're doing a good job of keeping the pressure on with it. But they've also eaten a lot more damage from the can in this game. Amazing DI from Zane. And now Stretch is in a nasty position. Who's going to die oh. first? What? Why? What happened? I, we're going to go take a look at that after this game anyways. So, guess back to evens. Uh, right now, the can is in a place where... Zane can't really make much use out of it. So Stretch is just going to have to use that as the opportunity to be able to get in. But now with Zane, uh, Can back into play, Zane suddenly has access to that mid-range burst option once again. I love the way that Zane is running from plat to plat. You, like, you have to play defensively against this character, and especially now that Stretch is more willing to be aggressive and break zone with forward air. Yeah. Like, forcing a more linear approach by virtue of the plat being right above Duck Hunt makes it so much easier for Zane to be able to respond. Mm -hmm. Stretch going so deep again, committing to it all. That's going to be a re-grab. Zane tries to punish the immediate option. <gasps> Almost jumps into the F-Smash. This is such a dangerous position for both players, but a little bit of spaghetti. Quite a bit, as a matter of fact. Yeah, no, it, I feel like the the high-tension portions of this match, like those, the ends of each stock, have been scrambles like yep. this. Stretch is going to probably jump from ledge again. Zane not going to try to contest it. Tries to go through the forward throw. Can Stretch air dodging to safety, but still finds themselves in this awful position once again. Zane can't seem to find this jump call out. That's how Stretch has been consistently getting off the ledge. Ooh, a couple of pings of the can, and the can falling right along the ledge. Lifesaver for Zane. Oh my. Oh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> oh, I oh, spoke whoa, too whoa, soon, whoa, whoa, I think. Whoa. Hold on. Nobody's dead yet. False alarm. We're back to stage until up tilt seals the deal and brings us to game three. That was twice that happened too. I was like, that was who's such dying? Like, who's dying and why? Uh. The end of stocks, stock after stock after stock in this set were just monstrosities from both players. Yeah. At least they both DI'd that can, right? Yeah, they would similar percent. I also <laughs> believe like Duck Hunt and Lucina, don't quote me on this. They might be at like a similar weight because it seems like uh you know, well, actually, you know what? Duck Hunt might be a little bit lighter considering Zane was at a bit of a lower percent and uh, they didn't get, s they got sent basically just as far. So that's just, that's just like a tricky position to find yourself in. So I want to see what happened here. So let's go. We're going to go ahead and take, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and take a look he at air, this. Uh, they air dodged. The, is that what happened? Yeah, it looked like Zane buffered an air dodge. All right, let's go take a look. Because Duck Hunt's flying at the same trajectory as Lucina and then like they just sort of shift. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, Stretch pressed back here a little bit too soon. So Ends up getting caught. That. And then, what, what, do we, what do we got going on here? Frame by frame, watch how Duck Hunt's pose shifts. 
But look, look, Lucina is the one that's in the far left blast zone. She's further, but the red dot is closer to the edge. And then bring it another frame in. Bop. Bop. Too far. That's trigonometry, baby, because that, the distance that it's... Yes, it is. It, it, the distance that it takes to travel to the coin is always going to be a little bit longer. Yeah, you're going to need to travel more of a distance. So Zane might have actually wanted to opt to DI a little bit higher up. I think that might have been the play. Uh, you got to always try to DI into the coin because that's going to be the longest distance. We can get into the maths of that in a little bit. Oh, like Game. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm actually a big fan of it. Nerd. You know what? I don't want to hear it. I don't want to <laughs> hear, hear it. You, you can't call me. We, we both talking about a video game. You can't call me a nerd. Yeah, yes, I can. <laughs> I'll call you a nerd on Battlefield. I'll call you a nerd on Pokemon Stadium, too. It's 100% for both players. They try to find a way to get back onto the stage, able to use Cam to cover themselves once again. What's the setup? Oh, my gosh. It's a whole lot of tricky play, but it's that Can finding its mark. Repeat performance, perhaps? Such a dangerous position to be in. Good recognition from Stretch that Zane would not be able to commit to the grab because the can was in overheat. And did Stretch jump? I believe Stretch must have jumped. There is no way that's hitting a ledge hang. All right, what do we got from here? Really weird interaction with a can there, but not too much past that point. These uppies out Stretch of pressure. A, they, were, they were more iconic duo. Stretch and uppy. Stretch just uppies out of pressure. Stretch uppies in neutral. Stretch uses uppy in ways we've never seen before. I mean, it makes sense when you need some sort of uh, invisible reversal option. And at higher percentages, there's been a couple of times where Stretch has been able to threaten kill because of Dolphin Slash. So yeah. it's certainly not the worst of options to use. And you know, best case scenario gets its kill. Most cases, it's resetting neutral. Mm -hmm. Zane right now, once again, finds themselves in such an awful position. I feel like Stretch has been responding to Can defensively so much better than they did last time. Zane tries to F-tilt Stretch into the Can, is not going to be able to find it. Duck Hunt still heavy enough to be able to keep on going. Oh, only Nair 1 finding its mark. It's just going to pop Zane to safety. Mm -hmm. Really weird situation there, but yeah. regardless, Zane believe sets Stretch, up shop. I believe Stretch might have had like a little bit too much drift. Multi-hits, auto-link angles, and drift don't fail. They, they don't like each other in ultimate too much, so you'll find yourself popping out of those. But Zane tries to go through the double clay pitch and follow up a little bit too low again. We saw that, I believe, in game number one. So now this is the ledge trap. Zane, covering neutral getup and jump simultaneously with that nail. So smart. Oh my. I feel like they have too much rage in order to find consistent links. So at this point, they're just going for raw damage. Yep. Which, I mean, works. They've got an incredible lead to maintain. And Stretch is finding a lot of difficulty with equalizing wow. this. Especially while Zane cements a 3 1 lead. Falling down with up air off mm -hmm. the Angel Plat. All right. Stops the bleeding a little bit. But that's a whole stock lead that Zane is sitting on. Stretch now, in the beginning, I feel like they weren't trying to hit Ken back enough. Now they might be a little bit too focused on it. Because we saw Stretch, like, no matter where Zane was, ran up and trying to F tilt that can when they still had that last stock, right? So now the goal is, like, to be able to find that middle ground balance of what am I focusing on Zane? What am I focusing on the can? And not trying to tunnel vision too much into either. Similar to, like, dealing with Pac Man and Hydro. Likewise, I feel like there's too heavy of a, lot, a reliance on forward tilt and dolphin slash in order to break zone and find some sort of breathing space. I think. There it is. I, I think finding some other different tools or even just waiting just a little bit so that you could properly react to the zoning tools that Zane's trying to make use of. Zane keeps on going for a lot of can shields, and can shield has been keeping them safe so long so far, but making it onto stage before Stretch. Stretch over committing. Luckily, that F tilt once again putting Zane into disadvantage. There it is again, Stretch wasting a lot of time focusing on Can, and Zane using that hit lag as the opening to be able to get back in. Stretch can't really afford to play games here, almost getting lapped in percent on last stock. Meanwhile, Zane's still chilling, controlling the stage super well. Whether or not they're playing from center stage or from beneath one of the plats, like, Duck Hunt Dog has the tools to play so aggressively in these kind of situations, and Stretch is just giving it to them. Love the patience and timing mix-ups from Ledge. Uh, right now, Zane has not been waiting that long at Ledge, but up though. You know what? At 120% rage as Lucina, even on as low as 160 on Duck Hunt, you'll be able to do it. Zane, a little bit out of that percent window to find uh, the up air, but I love the attempt nonetheless. You know, Zane definitely sitting pretty here, because at this point, if they consistently go for these close-range cans for the sake of breaking out of combos and trading, it's going so heavily in their favor. Now Zane finding themselves in a nasty position, but Stretch, that one over commitment is going to be costing them that game and thus that set. I like the idea to go for the neutral B. Not really sure if it's intentional, maybe a side B uh, would have been an order there, but 
Stugach just put themselves in so much leg, left themselves vulnerable, and Zayn was able to find that stock. So, what was the move that did it in for them too? Was that a forward air again? We got a couple of up airs, the shield breaker, yeah. shield breaker. Okay, I guess that was the yeah. overcommitment. Shield breaker there. is the overcommitment. Look at all that lag. Lucina was still in uh, in the end lag animation, so she was like pulling it back. Who's holding? Mm-hmm. Damn. There really wasn't any situation there where Shieldbreaker like made sense as a call out because anytime you saw Zane approaching with their shields, they had can almost yep. right there. So you're just guaranteed to go for a can trade. Which is a really solid situation for Duck Hunt in that particular matchup. Yeah. I feel like towards the end, Stretch was just like really unsure of when should I actually be trying to hit Gunman? When should I be hitting Can? Zane really recognized like, hey, you swinging when I feel like you shouldn't be. Uh, and, and as a result, when you are interacting with something, right? And unless you move, uh, it's it's a little bit strange, especially with Duck Hunt's projectiles, right? So if you hurt, if you try to hit anything with a hurt box, so like Gunman, for instance, right? No matter what, you're always going to be putting yourself uh, in, in the hit leg and then the end leg of that animation, unless your move has trampling, but we don't, we don't worry about that.